So I've been given a gift. And it's a gift that is absolutely useless unless I give it away. So I'm going to give it to you now. And so you can appreciate it. I'll tell you a story. And it's one of those old stories I used to tell traveling around the world that I love. It's a true story. I don't know if it happened, but I know that it's true. <laughs> it's a story that happened long ago in China where there was a man who had a magnificent horse. People would travel. It was up in the north of China. People would travel for miles just to admire this horse and say, you, you are truly blessed to own such a horse. And the man, who was wise, said, perhaps. But what seemed like a blessing may be a curse. Well, one day he went out to see that horse, and it was gone. It had just run off, jumped the fence, gone. And people came by to look at the empty corral and said, you've been cursed. Your horse is gone. And the man said, who knows? What seems like a curse may be a blessing. They said, how can you say that? Your horse is gone. A few weeks later, that horse came back. But it was not alone. It was followed by 21 wild horses, each as magnificent as that first horse. And by the law of the land, they became his property. Suddenly, this man was rich beyond imagination. And people said, you were right. It was a blessing. You get your horse. And the man said, who knows? <laughs> what seemed like a blessing may be a curse. Says, How can you say that? You're rich. But one day, not long after that, his son, his only son, whom he loved dearly, was riding one of those new wild horses. He was thrown from it and broke his hip. And as the man's son lay there in pain and they tried to heal him, people came to say, you're right. It was a curse. Men said, who knows? What seems like a curse may be a blessing. They said, how can you say that? Your son is there in pain. Not long after that, the emperor came through that village. He drafted every able-bodied young man for a war, a horrible war, fought for his own greed. And every young man who went from that village was killed. Only this man's son survived because of his broken hip. And to this day in that village, they say, what seems like a blessing may be a curse. What seems like a curse may be a blessing. Like I say, it's a true story. <laughs> and we know that. That's what we happen in life. But there's always something mysterious. Just how does that curse become a blessing? That's the part you want to know, right? How does that curse become a blessing? How does that work? And I'll tell you a little bit of my own journey. I've been traveling around the world telling stories, just collecting them one place to another. When my own story took a a sharp twist. I found I had thyroid cancer. Now, thyroid cancer is a treatable cancer. In fact, I've even heard it called a good cancer. If you can put those two words together in a sentence, right? Sort of like jumbo shrimp. It's just a complete non sequitur. <laughs> but it's considered a good cancer because you operate on it, you treat it, and you remove it. You take a, a pill, and it, it's pretty straightforward as cancers go. But in my case, there was a strange complication which is when I woke up from surgery and I said to the doctor, I said, I wouldn't wait. No, he said, you know, we do this surgical procedure to remove the thyroid, and sometimes that nerve, um, it goes in shock. A couple weeks, could be as long as a month. Yeah, I wouldn't wait. After a month, they said, he said, you know, I said a month, it could actually be six weeks. I wouldn't wait. After six weeks, it was, he said, you know, it could actually be two months, but again, I wouldn't worry. After two months, it it's two months. And he said, oh, if it's two months, this is permanent. You won't be able to speak again. I hope this doesn't affect your work. <laughs> so that led me on a journey. And you know, we go on journeys. And some of the best journeys are ones we never intended to take. And this journey wound me around and around because losing my voice as a storyteller, as a husband, as the father of two young children, five-year-old boy, two-year-old girl, my world unraveled. 
There's many more stories. I could write a book about it. I did write a book. It's out there, actually. You can read it. <laughs> and it tells the story of my dream. I'm going to cut to the ending because we're getting to the ending of the evening. It was after a year and a half of just that I had come to discover two things. One, I was never going to speak to them. And two, that was a gift. And it was at that point that the phone rang, and a doctor I had seen, I call him Dr. Scrabble name, he had called up. He's a thick Eastern European. He said, Joel, how are you? Would you speak up? I can't hear a word you say. Look, look, Joel, Joel, come in. I want you to meet somebody. He brought me in to introduce me to a doctor, and a doctor examined me as so many doctors had, and he said, you know, I know something that could possibly help. He said, there's a little surgical procedure I know to do, and if it works, it could restore some of your voice. But if it doesn't work, it would take away your whisper. It's your choice. Well, you know, in Nigeria, they have a saying, you can't unsneeze a sneeze. When a story starts to go, it moves on. And so I went in for that procedure. I laid down to sleep. I heard music, clarinet music. I heard a voice say, long ago in the old city of Jerusalem. And I thought, they have my voice. It was a CD. They were playing my CD. They were tuning my voice to match my CD. And they took me through this procedure. And at first, they tried and tried and tried. And they said, now speak. I was under the influence of a lot of drugs. I can't recommend drug use, but boy, when you have people looking in your throat trying to find your voice, it's the best thing. I, <laughs> but I panicked because no sound came out, and they said, not that, and they tweaked a little more, and they said, now speak. I couldn't do it. And they said, we'll give it one more try. And they said, try it again. And I said, what should I say? And there was my voice. And they said, tell us a story. And I said, ah, long ago in the old city of Jerusalem, that story. They said, Solomon was king, and he had a magic ring. It was stolen by a demon, Ajmodai, king of the demons. The doctor said, sutures. They sewed me up. I was flying, happy as could be. This was my voice back. I never thought I'd be able to speak again. And I couldn't stop talking. I said, doctor, i got to tell you that story. i got to tell you another story. i got to tell you a story of the lost horse. You know my thought? And i got to tell you about my mother. It's a wonderful story. And he said, i got to tell you something. He said, young man, what we have here is a miracle. In the times we've tried this procedure, it has never worked as well as it has now. It is a perfect match. But, and there's always a but, huh? but to do the surgery, we had to give you drugs to prevent swelling. And those will wear off in about 10 minutes. And once they do, it is absolutely essential that you do not speak or whisper or even try to speak at all for three weeks. If you do, you will undo what we have done. I said, but doctor, I have so much to It's an amazing story. He said, then I have something for you. Here, take this. <laughs> and he pulled a pen off the chart, you know, like doctor. I said, go write your story. It's a gift, but that's not the gift. I'm not gonna give you each a pen. Jay gives away chocolate, I'm not gonna give you a pen. He said, you write your story, but as you do remember, as you sit there in silence, he said, we all have stories. We're rich in stories. The stories that we have we can change the world. But to get to those stories, we need to listen. We need to stop talking long enough to hear ourselves and hear each other. And when we do, we find those stories that can change the world. Those stories have tremendous power. He said, you know what those stories can do? Those stories can turn a curse into a blessing. <laughs>